My lords, the House of Commons has done what we had hoped. They have considered and debated our meaningful vote amendment. They have not done what some of us hoped uh, and agreed with it. But, my lords, I think we should celebrate how far we have come on this issue from when the bill arrived in this House. At that stage, there was absolutely nothing in the bill about a vote, meaningful or otherwise, on the withdrawal deal, and there was no mention of no deal. All the Prime Minister had said was that there would be a vote in both Houses on a deal. There was no commitment to that in law, and the result of such a vote would have had no legislative consequence. The vote would simply have been on a motion which could be ignored. I won't go into whether it was amendable or not. <laughs> My Lords, any such vote in this chamber would have been particularly meaningless, as either we would have felt obliged to vote the same way as the Commons, whatever our view, or vote differently and then been ignored. Both of those, of course, being meaningless for this House. Because, as my noble friend Lord Grocott rightly feared at that point, if there were two votes, one in each House, it did raise the question of the um, primacy of the House of Commons. So that was all we had a promise for a motion, but untied to any legislation. What we now have in the bill is that the withdrawal agreement, including the framework on the future relationship, can only be ratified if it's been approved by the Commons and indeed debated here. That's a legislative requirement akin to the Article 50 requirement for a vote in the European Parliament. My Lords, that is a major concession. And it would not have been there without the hard work of the noble Lord Viscount Hailsham, without your Lordship's commitment to ensuring this matter was in the Bill, and without us sending the amendment back on Monday. I do, though, have a query about what would happen should there be no deal, as the rather extraordinary last-minute written ministerial statement, uh, as a result of which Dominic Greaves seemed to have felt he could support the government this afternoon, doesn't really clarify things to my mind. I'm not sure what it means. That the motion will be amendable? Liam Fox seems to be out and about already briefing that actually there's no change as a result of that. And it reads to me that it still leaves it to the Speaker to decide whether it's sufficiently neutral as to whether it's amendable. So it's not actually an undertaking <laughs> that such a motion will be amendable. So perhaps the, lady, the noble lady, the Minister, could just shed a bit of light on the significance of what made such a difference to the Right Honourable Member, um, Dominique Grieve. In the meantime, however, both the catalogue of changes to this bill outlined by my noble friend Lady Smith on Monday and on the insertion of parliamentary approval on the withdrawal agree deal agreed today, I hope even the Government will recognise the vital <coughs> role played by your Lordship's House and our distract detractors, particularly in parts of the press, will realise it is our role to ask the Government and the Commons to think again. We've done that, and to quite a large extent, we've been heard. Yeah. My Lords, as I hope I draw this debate to a close, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all noble Lords who have engaged constructively with the Government throughout our consideration of this Bill. I'm sure that noble lords from all benches will join me in paying tribute to the staff of the House who have worked tirelessly and professionally to support that consideration. I would also like to pay tribute to the work of my front bench colleagues and those of the opposition and Liberal Democrat parties who have worked on this bill. Their stamina alone, as indeed has been seen on the back benches across this House, has been incredibly impressive, as has the quality of debate and scrutiny they have engaged with. And finally, my Lords, I'm sure you will all join me in thanking the Bill team for their hard work. Yeah. I hope at some point they will be able to look back over the last 11 months with some kind of pleasure, but I expect that may take quite a while. I would say on behalf of the House, we are extremely grateful to them. 
Despite the comments of the noble Lord, Lord Adonis, I think the scrutiny of your Lordship's House has seen improvements to this bill. Over 230 amendments have been made by both Houses, and while there are a number of issues on which the Government did not agree, I am pleased that we have been able to find solutions and compromises to most of the concerns raised. The subject before us today, the way in which Parliament can have a meaningful say about our exit from the EU, is a vitally important matter. We have debated it at length, and as the noble Baroness Lady Hayter said, the proposition in the Bill now is very different as a result of that debate. But the elected chamber has now made its decision, a decision that your Lordship's House on Monday said it wanted to give them the opportunity to take. They have decided how they wish to proceed with considering the motions offered by the Government's amendment, and I ask the House now to respect that decision. I beg to move. <coughs> The question is that motion A be agreed to, as many of that opinion will say content. Content. The contrary not content, the contents have it. <laughs>